everyone. Yvonne and I will be talking about going from SWEs to PMs today, uh, or one might say our journeys from the SWE nation to the PM nation. Um, so sorry for the avatar jokes that you'll hear throughout this, um, including our backgrounds actually. Um, but to begin with, I'm Charmaine and I'm currently in my last semester studying computer science and minoring in creative writing at the University of British Columbia. Um, and so PM work experience wise, uh, I was a PM on the developer relations team at Microsoft this summer. And prior to that, I was a PM at the Microsoft Garage. Awesome, hey guys. I'm Yvonne and I'm a senior studying computer science at Cornell University with a minor in information science. I'm currently a PM intern at a health service startup and just like Charmaine, I've had the wonderful opportunity to intern as a PM at Microsoft this past summer. I've also co-founded Cornell's first PM club to foster and destigmatize learning to become a PM. Just to get started, uh, we wanted to keep this kind of more conversational and fun. So the primary bulk of the content will be on our talk and speaking and the slides will be there just to guide us um, to so just to ju jump off and dive right into it what is PM really you might hear that it stands for product project or program it's all a little bit confusing but today we'll be focusing primarily on product and really at the end of the day each company kind of defines their own definition of what it means to be any of these three roles um, so for instance, at, for us at Microsoft, even though we were listed as program managers, the bulk of the work we did was around product management. Yeah, and so what do they actually mean? Um, so definition wise, product managers typically help guide the product vision and the roadmap. And so you're defining features and you're working closely with developers and designers versus someone like a project manager who's maybe managing and estimating timelines of milestones and making sure that we can hit them. Um, and then lastly, program managers are typically the ones working closely with the team to make sure that everyone has what they need to achieve those goals and hit those milestones. And so you can almost think about program management as a higher level version of project management. And then another point we really wanted to drive home um, in general about PM is that there is no end to learning how to become a PM because a big part of our role is to continuously learn and learn how to learn quickly and effectively. There's always going to be something that you don't know, but it's okay and it's important to listen and just kind of sit in that, that discomfort and be able to act on it and when it comes to driving impact. Yeah, so the next we'll talk a bit about um, the differences between uh, SWE and product management. Um, so you can see kind of the chart we made here, the table. Um, so these are kind of the key differences, but uh, to speak to it a bit as APM, in order to come up with informed product decisions beyond just going with your gut instincts. And so that has worked well for someone like Steve Jobs who had really strong product intuition. Uh, might not work so well for the rest of us. So um, we can use techniques like data analysis or doing user research or some combination of those two um, in order to make uh, data-driven decisions. And so I've been on teams where I've done both. Um, I've done a lot of data analysis this past summer myself just with Python scripts and Jupyter and whatnot. Um, also coded up some mockups and prototypes for early user testing. And so this is where being technical really comes in handy. You can afford to be just a little more scrappy. At the end of the day, our goal is to build great products. So whether that be as a SWE or as a PM, like you can bring kind of different sides of your expertise and your experience into that role. So when you're a SWE, your decisions around the technical architecture and around the implementation, it's all going to be super collaborative with the PM, with the designers and things like that. And bringing those technical expertise into your role as a PM will be a great asset. And so now that we know the difference between SWE and PM, um, let's talk about rounding out your skills as a PM. So there's a lot you can do um, because PMing is such an interdisciplinary skill. This also means that no matter what background you're coming from, you would find yourself having a lot of transferable skills. So we'll focus on coming from a software engineering background and trying to go into product management. So first and foremost, personal projects. You've heard this so many times in software engineering and you're going to hear it in product management. And so having experience in both means that you're no longer just focusing on 
technical implementations of a project or what stack you want to learn. You're interested in React, so you just make a React project. You want to also be putting a bit of emphasis on what you're actually building, who you're building it for, and why you're even building it in the first place. And perhaps even go a little further than your typical hackathon project because you want to stick around to really figure out what kind of project that you're, what kind of impact your project has had or can have. And so maybe you've shipped an app to the app store or you created or actively maintain an open source project on GitHub, right? What is the impact that you're creating here? Um, how many users do you have? Do you iterate on feedback? Etc. So there's lots you can do with personal projects that helps you practice your skills as APM, but also a really low stake way of trying out skills that you might not feel as comfortable with. So maybe you're a PM who has never done user research. Maybe you could use that in your personal project to really try uh, flexing that muscle. But this doesn't have to be just done through technical personal projects. You can also get these skills from organizing events. This can be a meetup or your local hackathon group whatever it is, it'll help you basically continuously gain experience in planning, working with the team, making really tough decisions, and honestly, just like building out emotional t intelligence that I see in a lot of the PMs that I admire and look up to. Just taking on more PM and leadership roles within these school projects and organizations that you're already a part of um, will really help give you a better sense of what not only what being a PM is, but also if you truly like it or not, and if you like the daily tasks that you do and working with the people that you do. Um, additionally, like during some of the software engineering internships and other professional roles you've had in the industry, like taking on more PM related tasks during those experiences, even though you're not necessarily a PM, could be super be beneficial as well. So some examples are being able to like offer and lead a design session around the system architecture of your project and like taking those extra steps to work closer with your PM and your designer to understand the why of the problem that you're solving in addition to the what and how. And then being able to also kind of copy chat and reach out to PMs in the company that you're already in to interview prep and just become more knowledgeable in what the what they do in their daily lives i think will provide a great perspective around uh, being a pm there and finally we also really want to emphasize that um like pm is like there's there's no major for it. it's hard to kind of find that path for you to follow to learn about it and there isn't oftentimes a space for you to do so don't be afraid to create your own and kind of be entrepreneurial in that way and find a way to create a way, a path for you to learn about PM. For example, if there's no uh, kind of club at your school designated for product management, you can go ahead and start one. And because I, just because you are interested in PM, odds are you are not the only one interested in PM at your school. So you can find other people who are also passionate about PM to learn about it together. Um, and in that way, you can also develop your PM skills. And outside of work, like outside of school uh, and uh, professional life, you can also develop your PM skills on a daily life by just being, by writing more, being able to like practice your communication skills. So one thing that I see is that PMs often like to talk in bullets. So being very structured and intentional about the words you're using uh, can also really help and improve your communication abilities. And all in all, the more you flex the PM skills, we know that you have, the better you'll get. Yeah, those are really great points, especially about um, like kind of creating your own space to become a PM. Um, I think some students in my school just this past year started a PM club. And so stuff like that really makes a difference, right? And you're building out communities and that's huge. Um, so what we're really trying to get at here is using your strengths and experiences to your advantage. So sometimes we underestimate our own experiences, but I think even something like studying creative writing, right? A minor that has nothing to do with my major. Um, I think it has actually come in handy a lot more than some people might think. And so skills like that is what we each individually bring to the table. All right, so with that, uh, we'll actually wrap up part one right here. So in this video, we talked about um, how we can develop our PM skills outside of the classroom when there's no set path to do so. Yeah, so next time we'll be focusing on how to interview for those PM roles and our tips around that. And just to keep you thinking more about 
the PM role itself and what kind of PM you want to be, we wanted to draw some inspiration from our great friend, Uncle Iroh. It's time for you to look inward and start asking yourself the big question. Who are you and what do you want? Thank you I so much for- I love Iroh. <laughs> yes, he's an amazing inspiration. <laughs> but yeah. We hope that he inspires you as well. And thank you so much for taking the time to listen to us talk about our experiences and our journey um, to being a PM. Uh, please like and subscribe and comment if you have any questions and we'll be sure to answer. Yeah, and we post videos every Monday. So see you next Monday. Awesome.